Hello, and welcome to the Hartebeus Hook Satellite Earth Station, also known as Deep Space Station 51. Kind of like Area 51, but, but I'm digressing. We're here today because, well, it's fitting given the car that we're talking about. Those of you who know will know. You see, we're all a little bit sad about Subaru, STI in particular, because, well, after more than 30 years, this name that has become legend has kind of come to the end of an era. You see, earlier this year, Subaru Corporation told us that the new STI, the one that was going to come and blitz everything out of the water and save the day, was going to be electric. Electric! It's it doesn't even make sense. And so we thought, well, let's make a film to bid a fond farewell to a name that, well, I guess we'll never really see in this form ever again. Back in the mid 90s, after Subaru started winning rallies and then championships, thankfully, they started to build performance cars that you and I could buy. STIs stood for hardcore performance for the road. Forged pistons, all-wheel drive, uprated power, improved brakes, bracing gold alloys, yes, a massive rear wing, and of course, the signature bonnet scoop. It was a hit from day one, and as the years drew on and this cult-like following grew, they started to make limited and special editions that were as rare as hen's teeth like this one. This is a 1998 version 5 Subaru Impreza STI Type R. Very, very special car. 24 years ago this thing was built and let me tell you, it is proper. Curb weight, just over 1.2 tons. 2 litre flat 4 turbocharged boxer engine puts out 206 kilowatts, 357 newtons, and it smashes 100 in a time that many Lambos, Porsches, M5s, and M3s couldn't believe 24 years ago. 4.8 seconds. It's an absolute monster. In this coupe body style, Subaru only built 416 of these cars. So to find one and then to drive one in South Africa, <laughs> it's no small feat. It's the rawness for me. There's no electronic driver aids. There's no weird stuff happening with a computer. It's just foot down and off we go. And I can see some of you, you're going, yeah, but it's just too much, it's just too big, the wing is too big, I don't like the big bonnet scoop, it's just too much for me. You know what? You're right. If it's too much for you, it is too much for you. STI is not for everybody, never has been, never will be. In fact, STI is for a very special group of people. There are people who just get it. In fact, they're so amazing that when they heard we were making a film, they decided they would come and join us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's make some noise for generations and generations of STI. Starting with the GC8 spec STI from which this very special Type R was birthed, Subaru kept them coming. Everything just evolved. The designs, the product names, the nicknames, the street names, but the recipe remained. 
Who can forget the introduction of the bug eye that rumbled onto the SA scene in the year 2000? Then the blob eye came some five years later. Then Subaru hit us with the more modern Hawkeye after that, before knocking all of us off our feet with an all new hatch version in 2007. When Subaru came back to their senses, not really, the hatch gave way to the 2009 third generation STI, which did the business until the current fourth gen VA series was introduced in 2015. They were and continue to be unique, boisterous, completely mad iterations of the same iconic recipe from the early 90s. So, whether it's on race tracks, rally circuits, or our national roads, the STI name must, even to this day, be celebrated and venerated. In essence, it really is the end of an era. The recipe that birthed this modern day icon has well and truly come to an end. With news of an electric STI, well, it's crushing, crushing news for us petrol heads. Wow, Avon. Wow. My man, we are in the most beautiful place on earth. This is scenery for bug eyes, hawk eyes, not teary eyes. It's not a funeral, my friend. STI is not dead. Jason. It is evolving. It's Jason. changing. Are you a petrol head? You call yourself a petrol head. This is sad. We're never going to see them like this. You like going ba 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 fra ba ba ba. We're not going to see that anymore. Petrol head is so 2019. It's, it's, so, it's so before COVID. I am a car guy. And as long as it's a car, I will be overjoyed. You probably still asking people for their BBM pin on your Blackberry. You probably still on Mix It. Jason, you probably no. still have a landline, Avon. You are in the past. We've got to move to the future. You are probably one of those guys that complain. No, oh, there's no CD-ROM on this computer. How's it even going to work? Jason, we are moving to the future. You're being a child. You're being a child. Avon. Listen, wait, the listen. recipe is talk the to next, all wheels. The now next you've got STI, electric the, motors the, the, which will be boosted. Listen, listen. The next STI that goes past here is just going to go. Do you know why? Because it's going to yes, be going so fast, the sound will be lagging behind it. It's going to be faster. You know it's going to be more brutal. You're going to have the talk of boost all the time because it's electric. You can't argue with facts. I'm big and so are my facts. Listen, Avon is forgetting one teeny tiny, but in my opinion, incredibly important thing. How's he gonna do a whole film, an entire movie about this topic and not once mention another three letter Subaru acronym that started this whole thing? Hello. Hello. Before the Subaru Technica International was created, the letters WRX came to the fore. WRX World Rally Experimental. This was where the whole idea of a beefed up rally bred Subaru performance car was born. And WRX preceded STI as the first official entry into rumbling performance Subarus. WRX was first placed into the Impreza in 1992 and then the Impreza STI followed a whole two years later. So, while I understand Avon is very worried about the whole new STI and its electricity-ness, well, I've got some news about the WRX. There's a new one. It's not electric. And I'm driving it. On the face of it, things look promising. Got a signature bonnet scoop, check. Aggressive sporty design with the hips, check. Four pipes, check. Rumbling exhaust note we all know and love? No, not, not, not even close. Not at all. This sounds like no WRX before it. So off the bat, I can tell you that this is absolutely not what I was expecting. You now get an 11.6 inch touchscreen infotainment system. You get dual climate control. You've got ambient lighting. In a WRX, you know the mood is always red. In a WRX, uh, but it doesn't do the 
Or maybe we must turn the lights to blue. Now, once the shock and awe of the beautiful interior is worn away, you now start getting into the real value for money. You see, the new WRX comes with Subaru's latest version of EyeSight. And if you know anything about EyeSight, it scans the road ahead of you, not only for obstacles, but where the lanes are. And when you combine EyeSight with its capabilities of lane keeping assistance, lane centering, yep, yep. and cruise control, to and emergency braking, this car will stop itself. If I am busy looking at you and somebody stops there, it will immediately brake on its own. Automated driving as close as we can get. That is enough distraction. Let's speak about the reason we're all here, that beautiful engine. It's an all new 2.4 liter, four cylinder, turbocharged boxer engine. That's what we asked for. More displacement means more power, a whole five kilowatts. More displacement means more torque. No, it doesn't. It comes with exactly the same amount of torque. And that's why I think we need to find somewhere quiet because a little bird whispered in my ear as we collected this vehicle that there's no official zero to a hundred time. I think we should set one. We're in the south of Johannesburg. It's got to be somewhere quiet around here. Don't let me down, okay? You know. Ah, you see now, a bully from the past has arrived. Everyone, hey, there's no point of us racing. This is WRX. Is not. This is a, a different category. What you're trying to do is check. It's childish. What? Are you guys ready? No, we're not. Counting you down. I can be honest and say that drag race frustrated me immensely uh, for a number of reasons, the first of which I lost. Uh, the second reason is the fact that I did not feel like a participant. I felt a bit like a gamer. I pressed a button and the car did things while Avon seemed to be working furiously with the clutch and a glorious manual transmission as the Lord intended. I, however, was uh, here doing pretty much nothing. Uh, so. The biggest thing that I missed, not the manual gearbox, the biggest thing that I missed is that Subaru bubble. Where was the rots? Rots! All we heard was absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. The good news is the good people at Subaru have informed me that the new WRX will come with an optional sports exhaust so that you can still have some rots in your life. It is the spice of life. What else is new? Well, everything really. Uh, they've done uh, some dynamic tuning to both the suspension and the steering to make sure that your driving is as crisp and clean as possible. And they've done a major, major upgrade uh, to the original SPT, as they call it Subaru Performance Transmission. It's actually just a CVT. That's what it is. Subaru renamed the CVT because they know how we feel about CVTs. And then they try to fool us by making it lighter and a little bit quicker. And if I must be honest, while I'm skinnering like this, it is the best CVT I've ever driven. I've driven many CVTs, haven't liked a single one. This one makes sense. Got a manual option, the gear changes feel uh, more energetic and more like your actual gears, not just that CVT cone situation that I can't even really explain, but you know exactly why I don't like it. Then we have to talk about the symmetrical all-wheel drive system because it's like a rally car on the road. Why? Symmetrical all-wheel drive. It's tried, it's trusted, it's unbelievable. Thank you, Rally. Thank you, Subaru. Let's find some dirt. This is why you buy a WRX, because you're South African. And as a South African, you cannot adventure onto a dirt road. 
You don't want to do a dirt road in your three series. You definitely don't want a dirt road in your C-Class. And even if you think you're fancy with your Quattro, you don't want to dirt road. But in a WRX, it feels at home. You think that the 18-inch wheels with low-profile tires would cause a problem, but we are flying! This is what we're talking about. We're in Scooby country now, baby! So, firstly, don't be fooled into thinking that the new WRX is just a beefed up version of the old one, because it's not. In fact, it's absolutely not. And if I'm honest, I think that's the problem. They called it WRX, which means our expectations are big exhaust pipes going, oh, turbos hissing, bangs coming from places that non-car people can't explain. We want to scare the children, and this doesn't scare anybody. So it's not the car, it's the name. Because WRX traditionally, you'd be in the market for a Golf R, you'd be competing with S3s. Now, I feel like we're moving more into BMW 3 Series. Maybe it's a Mercedes C-Class or even an Audi A4. If you're looking for something that's quick, comfortable and amazing to drive all day long, this is it. If you're looking for something with off-road capability, this is the best sedan off-road in the market. But is it a WRX? I don't know. And that's why, as embarrassed as I am to admit it, I have to say that Avon had a point. This is the end of an era. The end of a generation, an amazing generation. A generation of hooligans that went home to feed their families and put food on tables. This is the generation of people that haven't missed a debit order since school. People that have been making good decisions their entire life. Is it a good decision? Yes. Is it a WRX? I don't know. <laughs>